today I wanted to talk to you about ICOs, about initial coin offerings. I want to talk about how to find them, how to do social sentiment analysis against them to find the best ICOs out there, the ones that have the most potential to rise in value, right? So you can make some money. Um, before I jump into that, I wanted to just quickly show you my Steemit blog. I recently started a Steemit blog uh, in July, about a month ago. Um, and what Steemit is, it's a blogging platform or a social media network that they're trying to build based on blockchain uh, technology and based on cryptocurrency. They, they have their own coin. Uh, it's called a Steam coin or SBD is the ticker. And what it is, is every time you blog or post a video or participate, engage on the platform, you actually gain um, like a reputation value and you earn money on different posts. And based on what you upvote and what people upvote of yours, you'll earn money. You can see down here, I posted this yesterday, <clears throat> um, you know, 18 hours ago, how, to, how I draw my bases to, to trade altcoins. Some of you may have seen this. I've earned two cents, <clears throat> right? Not a whole lot of money right now. But I just started this, this, this blog, right? There's people on here making quite a bit of money. Um, just something I wanted to test out. Looks like a pretty interesting platform. I'm into cryptocurrencies, and this is built uh, around cryptocurrency and blockchain. And so I just want to check it out, but just wanted to let you know, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, it's steamit.com at slash at DSC Enterprises is my um, Steemit blog. Anyway, go, go check that out. I post all my videos here and I po post additional blog posts if you guys would like to see those. Um, I'm going to pause this real quick, take a quick drink. Okay, so now let's get into the topic at hand here. I'll, I'll go into Steemit a little bit more in a, in a future post, but the topic at hand is ICOs. And why do I want to talk about ICOs? ICOs today are all the rage, right? People are talking about ICOs like they are, you know, just free money sitting out there. Um, you know, they're the next big thing. They're the hottest thing right now. Uh, people claim that there's even maybe a bubble with ICOs. You know, who really knows? But I do know that every day, every week, there are dozens, if not hundreds of ICOs popping up out of thin air. New companies that are being built or funded and then built from literally nothing. Um, they're, they're raising this money through people donating Bitcoin or Ethereum um, or other cryptocurrencies so that they can fund a company to build out a new infrastructure or a new idea around blockchain or, or cryptocurrency technology, right? And so this is what's happening. And you can now start to participate in these ICOs and invest, you know, a bit of money in them if you'd like, you know, in the form of Bitcoin or Ethereum. And when these things launch, they typically go up, um, you know, many tens of percentages, right? Um, there's so many ICOs that I've seen that have started out, you know, at pennies on the dollar, and then they go up to a couple dollars or $20 or $10 or whatever it is, you know, so it's a really, really good opportunity, really good potential for somebody interested in startups, interested in IPOs in the stock market world to really, uh, you know, have a good opportunity here to make a lot of money and just find some really interesting country, uh, companies and concepts. I've been finding some amazing things, right? Um, you know, people building a company around genetic data or genomic data and how to store that on blockchains to make it private and secure, right? Really interesting. There's an ICO for that. And they're about to uh, launch their company soon with all the money that they're raising uh, to build this thing. Um, so anyway, today, so, so like I said, I wanted to show you, you know, uh, how to pick good ICOs? How do how do you how do you go through all the ICOs and pick out the good ones? How do you know which ones may have potential? How do you know which ones are even being talked about in the media on the internet? How do you know which ones are popular and which ones aren't? Um, largely today, ICOs pricing anyway is based on the perception of what people think the company can do, the perception of what the, you know people think the, the value of the company is. Um, and perception in the ICO market is really everything, right? ICOs today aren't built on really solid technical um, indicators or a technical business foundation. Um, I mean, that's probably arguable, but a lot of it's hype today. A lot of it's pumping up. A lot of it is, you know, um, just this quick money people are raising without even really looking at what these companies are trying to do. Um, and, and that's good in one way, right? It's a really good opportunity for traders to get in and to make a lot of money on these ICOs, um, but it's also very risky and you gotta be careful of what you invest in. Um, I, for one, think it's a huge opportunity. I'm super, super excited about ICOs. I've been learning and learning more and more about them. Um, and I've been trying to think of or figure out ways to, you know, determine or figure out how is an ICO going to succeed in the stock market or not, in the cryptocurrency market or, or on the cryptocurrency exchanges, how are ICOs going to perform? How can you kind of predict that or get information to know that? And I was doing some research today and I, I came across some pretty, pretty cool things, some pretty interesting 
uh, things. So let me first show you. So where I typically go to start finding ICOs and start kind of weeding through, you know, ones that I may be interested in investing in, um, I kind of, I first start with CoinGecko. I, I think I showed you that in a few videos ago. I start with CoinGecko. I go here first, I kind of look through this list and I read the descriptions and see which coins I'm actually interested um, in participating in. I then may go over to, you know, icotracker.net, which is another site that tracks ICOs, right? Uh, and then I, lastly, I may go over to icoalert.com, another site that tracks um, ICOs. And all of these, they, they track ICOs kind of, you know, daily. Daily new ICOs are popping up. You can participate and invest in them, um, you know, uh, at different times, different time frames, things like that, right? So let's go back to CoinGecko. So one company, one ICO that I've been interested in and in looking at a bit lately, um, and unfortunately, I don't know if it's still available for tr uh, uh, investing in. I couldn't find out how to do it. But a very interesting company, right? It's called Encryptogen. It's a company that's building and building um, a technology around blockchain to store genomic data on the blockchain, right? Um, through this technology, so that it can store it privately and more securely. I was just I was just telling you about that. And so you can obviously go to the site. You could click in CoinGecko here, and you could kind of see what this is all about. Um, and you could visit the ICO page, right? And then you can go from there and um, decide whether or not you want to invest in it. So that's kind of initially just how I find ICOs, right? So then what I do from here is I'll actually take the ICO name and any other terms that may be related to it. I'll copy the term and I'll actually bring it over to uh, Google Trends. So I've already pasted it in here, right? Encryptogen. Um, so I'll paste it right into Google Trends and I'll see, okay, this is how much Encryptogen is being talked about on the internet, right? In the, uh, the, on the World Wide Web, if you will. Um, this is how much this has been being talked about in the last 12 months. Now, let's kind of reduce this down to, let's just say, the last 90 days, right? Um, I would expect there's a bit more activity because it's going to, um, you know, it, it has its ICO now. People are probably talking about it, right? So now what I'll do is I'll go back and let's say uh, Benjacoin. I don't even know what this is, but let's say Benjacoin is something that I want to invest in. So I'll copy Benjacoin uh, and I'll look at Benjacoin. What's Benjacoin? It's a merchandise ad network built on blockchain. Okay, I'll go back to Google Trends. I'll paste it in here. Press Enter. Um, and let me do that with a few, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, let's see. What's another good one? Um, let's say Medibond. Let's say Blocklancer. Blocklancer. Uh, the first platform to enable freelancing on the blockchain. It's pretty interesting, right? They'll probably pay people out somehow on the blockchain, uh, pay, pay out freelancers. Anyway, let's put it on our comparison chart here. Um, all right, so you see what I'm doing. I'm adding a bunch of different uh, stuff go go. It's stuff go go. It's a decentralized mobile e commerce platform. Let's go ahead and add that. Let's just assume for a minute I'm interested in all these companies. So now what you can kind of start seeing here are different trends in terms of how, you know, who's actually um, looking at these ICOs or how much these ICOs are being talked about on the internet. Let's go back out to 12 months and take a look. So look, that's pretty interesting, right? Um, some of these are going up. The yellow one, which is Block Lancer, is, you know, going up. Um, the blue one, which is Encryption, is actually going down, which is pretty interesting, right? So this is just an indication or an indicator of how much people may be talking about the ICO and how much, you know, um, you know, people may be excited about it or hyped up about it. Um, in this case, a lot of these are very similar, but you can kind of see that at one point encryption was being talked about a lot more than some of these others, right? So that's kind of step one. As I do that, I just kind of look at Google Trends and see which of these coins are being talked about the most. And if one's being talked about uh, more than the other, I'll typically favor that one because it means there's more people interested. There's more people actively looking at it. Um, there's more people actively probably willing to invest in it. Um, there's just more hype about it. And so I tend to go you know, with those because those... Um, to me, have a better chance of going up, right? More people will be buying, more people will be investing in the ICO and will be buying that particular coin. So that's kind of step one. Step two is then I will take the, the name of the ICO again, I'll use encryption for as an example, and then I'll go to a website called socialmention.com. So go to socialmention.com, it's real-time social media search and analysis. It basically does social sentiment analysis for different terms uh, and whatnot. 
and it'll predict it won't predict but it'll show you trends of different terms that you may put in and what the what the sentiment around it is so i'm going to put encryption in this and i'm going to just go ahead and search it <clears throat> take a drink while it's uh, while it's doing that should come up here in just a moment it's taking taking a minute here all right i'm going to pause this while it's all right, so I shall mention, finally loaded up. Okay, so what you what you see here is the sentiment analysis for encryption. So you can see a lot of information here, right? You can see, okay, what's the sentiment of this particular term? It's a six, pretty good, right? It's the ratio of mentions that are generally positive to those that are generally negative. So the sentiment is generally good for encryption. People are feeling pretty good about this. They're not thinking it's a scam. They're not thinking it's scammy or anything like that, right? The passion at 33%, that seems pretty high. Passion is a measure of the likelihood that individuals talking about your brand will do so repeatedly. People are interested in encryption. People are talking about it, right? Um, here's the reach, here's the strength, so forth and so on. And you can look down here and you can see, okay, was the sentiment positive or was it negative or was it neutral? In this case, it's positive. There's six positive sentiment uh, analysis hits, if you will, on this. What's the keywords? Right? There's other keywords around encryption, which is obvious. Um, who are the top users and people talking about this? Gives you some info around who may have a stake here or maybe people investing in this particular ICO. Um, and then it also gives you hashtags around what they're doing and it gives you sources of, of the mentions itself. So there's a, quite a few mentions on Twitter, Reddit, WordPress, and then you can actually go off onto these platforms individually and look at what the mentions of encryption are. Are they positive? Are they negative? Are people, bull people bullish on this ICO or are they bearish, right? You can go and do your research there. Now, when you start kind of comparing these together and you can you know, put this in a spreadsheet or, or whatever you want, when you start comparing this stuff together, you start to see some interesting trends about you know, who's, actually, um, <laughs> who's actually talking about this stuff. Um, so let me go over here. Here's another one. Um, actually, let me type in another one. Moose coin, I think, was one. Um, Moose coin was one that I, I saw earlier. And let's just type it in here for a comparison. Absolutely. So I'll show you an example here. So we have encryption. Right now we're loading Moose coin. Okay. And one thing, too, to point out here is that you know you can alert yourself on any mentions as well. So you can email yourself if there's a mention about encryption. See how many times that happens. See how many people are interested. So here's Moosecoin. So strength is zero, and strength is the likelihood that the brand will be discussed in social media. So the strength is lower on Moosecoin. People aren't talking about it quite so much, right? The sentiment is a four. Still, you know, positive. You look down here, there's still positive sentiment, but it's not as strong as encryption. The passion, not bad, right? Um, I think it's actually higher than encryption. Encryption had a 33% passion. I mean, it's about genetics, right? Not maybe as many people interested in, in genetics. Moosecoin, Moosecoin, what it is, it's a betting platform. It's a platform to make bets, right? Um, back and forth between people. And people are passionate about that. People are passionate about betting, about their money. So you can tell why it's a 43% passion. So once you start comparing these things together, it'll give you an indication of which ICOs are actually more likely or most likely to succeed based off of what just the market sentiment is of that particular coin or that particular ICO, right? Um, and I've found some really good success in this. I, uh, I've been watching kind of coins. I haven't invested myself yet into many, ICO coin, many ICOs. Um, I've done two, um, but not many yet. But what I've been doing is I've been watching the before and after. So I've been just watching, you know, before an ICO launches, you know, what's the price at? What's the ask at? And then after the ICO uh, launches, what does it go up to? And then trying to do some of this backtracking to see if the sentiment has any um, influence on the price, right? So, so again, you could kind of see how this stuff can be useful, right? You could see how this could be useful when you're trying to decide what ICOs to invest in, right? So I just wanted to show you that, um, you know, and you can do this with all of these ICOs if you wanted to. You could compare all of them, put them on a spreadsheet, compare them, and see you know which ones are being talked about the most. And you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised you know at how many of these are um, you know being talked about in the in the in the on the internet, right? Anyway, hopefully I found that. <laughs> Anyway, hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, you know, 
uh, hopefully you guys have success investing in ICOs. Let me know how you guys like this strategy, if you guys think it's a good method or not. Um, I found success with it. I think you guys might as well. Um, such an exciting time, such an exciting time to be investing in cryptocurrencies and learning about all these topics and, and actually making videos and blogging about them. I mean, this is just the beginning, guys. This is gonna, this stuff is going to be popular for the next, gosh, probably decades to come. Uh, blockchain's not going away. These cryptocurrencies and this, these new um, businesses that are coming up from them are not going away. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and we're in the wild, wild west, right? They aren't being regulated right now. Um, you know, uh, countries are now, governments are now starting to look at, you know, ICOs and look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and exchanges and starting to try to regulate these things. And, you know, once they do, a lot of the opportunity that we see now is going to be gone. It's going to be, um, it, it's going to be possible to still get into ICOs. It's going to be possible to still invest and trade, but there's going to be a lot more regulations around it. There's going to potentially be a lot more fees. There's going to be a potentially, um, you know, more middlemen. It's just not going to be quite the same, right? Think of the internet back in 1990, right? Uh, the time of the bulletin boards. Think of when the internet, the World Wide Web just came out. Um, you know, people didn't really know how to handle it and anything could go. It was harder to use the web because it was new and people didn't know much about it. We're in the, the same time right now with blockchain and with blockchain technology. It's the early days. Um, it's the early days. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy what it really is, blockchain and what the concept is behind it. Um, we won't get into that right now. Maybe read my last post about how, you know, blockchain is the future of money. It's the internet of money, essentially. Um, blockchain is to money what Napster was to music. It just really completely revolutionized the music industry, right? Peer-to-peer -peer music trading. Now we have peer-to-peer -peer money manipulation uh, in the form of blockchain, right? Money is essentially becoming programmable. Money is you know, now built with an API. It's crazy to think about that, that you can actually now start to program money to do different things. And these ICOs are proof of that, not only with money, but with, with a whole host of different things, right? Where you're storing data, transferring data, agreeing on, you know, in contracts, tracks or on transactions. Um, this stuff is not going away. The sky is the limit on this stuff. And hopefully, you know, this video helped you guys get a little bit closer to taking your first step in investing in an ICO and getting involved in cryptocurrency. Um, big opportunity, guys. I will talk to you next time. Have a good one.